Checking in on the thermometer here, we can see the overnight low inside here was 37 degrees. And it actually apparently got up to 57 degrees yesterday. So it's definitely warmer in here. When I woke up this morning, there was ice in my shoes that I'd left outside my tent. So either this thermometer's way off or it does retain heat in here a little bit better. That said, even though it's warmer in here than outside, I need it to stay above 47 degrees, ideally above 50 degrees overnight. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing any gluing or painting on the little foam house anytime soon. I got a bunch of cold weather in the forecast for the next week. Fortunately, I've got plenty of other projects to do until it warms up again. You may remember that I had to hotwire this cart because the master solenoid was dead. I've got a replacement now and I'm going to install it today. I'm going to start by disconnecting the battery to avoid any unnecessary excitement. If you want to see somebody electrocute themselves, go check out the Electroboom channel. This is too slow. I'm going to get a socket wrench. So you may remember some number of episodes ago, I bypassed this solenoid because it wasn't working. And this has the risk that if one of these other solenoids gets stuck in the on position, there's no good way to stop the cart. The best option in that case would probably be to take it out of forward or reverse and put it in neutral, but that could arc and destroy the forward reverse switch. So. I'm going to remove this old broken solenoid and install the new one. taking a little break here because I heard some strange sound on the roof and it turns out we've got a little spring snowstorm here. So this is never going to come off like this. It turns out that the stud it's attached to is just a screw and it's rotating around and around. So I got to grab a screwdriver, hold one end of it steady. All right, I'm pretty sure I just called this a screw. It's a bolt and it looks like the other side has just another nut, some sort of hex head on it. So now doing a little bit of golf cart contortion here, trying to fit all of my hands in this little space. They definitely don't give you good access to this compartment. One thing I like about the other cart, uh, one thing I like about the other cart is it seems to open up a lot more into the engine compartment. It's got a front and rear entrance to make this sort of shenanigans hopefully a bit easier. On paper, this was supposed to be pretty simple. Just take off six bolts, pull the old solenoid off. But as you can see, it was complicated by the fact that due to the layout and the access, it was really hard to actually get the tools on there to remove the bolts. They were too big, they didn't quite fit. There's lots of futzing around, so what seemed like it would be a one minute task was more like a 20 minute task. 
that's pretty common with a lot of engine compartments and engine repair work. The layout is not really designed to make it easier for you to come back and fix things later. I'm sure that in the assembly schedule for this, they had that thing all assembled before they put it in. They didn't have the batteries in yet, and it was designed to maybe be easy to assemble. But now that I've loosened all the now that I have loosened all the bolts, let's see if I can get this thing off. So fortunately, that slipped right off. No weird prying or anything else. So one question is, which way does the solenoid go on? Does it go on this direction? Or does it go in this direction? It looks identical in both orientations, and there's no positive or negative marking on any of these terminals. The reason for that is it doesn't matter. What matters is that these large terminals here are used for the high current, and then these low ones here are used for the low current path. But it doesn't really matter which way things are hooked up. It's just a switch, and so it closes. And even for these small terminals here that activate the coil, it doesn't matter which way it gets energized. The solenoid works the same way either way. So uh, it, that's why there's no markings on here. It's because it doesn't matter. So one cute thing I just discovered here is because I got just the cheap Chinese knockoff here, instead of having a 3 8 inch uh, wrench for these nuts, I need to use the 10 millimeter wrench. So that's going to be, somebody's going to be cursing me out in the future when they find out we've got both metric and imperial on this cart now. But I guess that's life. So I've tightened down all the electrical connections, but not yet the mechanical connection that holds it to the frame there. I'd need to do that, but because those mechanical ones were so hard to get at, I want to actually make sure this thing works before I spend a whole bunch of time putting them on, only to have to take them off again. So if I've done everything correctly, this cart should go when I give it a little gas. So I'm going to start by turning the key on, got to put it in forward, got the wheel turned here so I don't run over the stuff in front of me. And now, we'll find out. Hey! So now all I gotta do is tighten down that solenoid so that it doesn't wobble off. It's great to have this cart back in fully operational condition. A lot of people are going to be driving it besides me, and it would be a real shame if one of them got stuck in a runaway cart situation and got injured. So it's great to have it back to its original specification where that's not likely to happen.